let's talk about Fabry disease. It's a rare inherited disorder caused by a lack of the enzyme alpha-galactosidase A, resulting in the accumulation of a sugary fat called globotriacylceramide, or GB3, in the body's cells and tissues. Childhood symptoms include pain in the extremities and a skin rash. And with adulthood, stroke, hearing loss, heart disease, and kidney failure. Fabry disease has a classic form that begins in childhood and a late onset form in adulthood. Both forms have varying levels of severity and are caused by a mutation in the GLA gene. This gene instructs cells to make the enzyme alpha-gal-A, which normally breaks down GB3 in the lysosomes within cells. Often referred to as the recycling center of our cells, lysosomes break down waste, allowing cells to function properly. But without enough alpha-gal-A, GB3 builds up in the lysosomes, ultimately leading to the symptoms of Fabry disease. There is currently no cure for Fabry disease. There are options available that may help manage symptoms, including enzyme replacement therapy, which consists of lifelong infusions administered every two weeks, and an oral treatment, available only to patients with specific gene mutations. However, there still remains an unmet medical need to address heart complications and target the cause of disease. Gene therapy aims to accomplish this through a one-time treatment that may prevent, slow, or stop the disease by introducing a working GLA gene into cells that require the essential enzyme. This could be done using an in vivo gene therapy approach. Here is Dr. Robert Desnick to tell us more. In vivo means that the treatment is delivered directly into the body, while ex vivo typically means that the person's cells are modified outside of the body and then returned. For in vivo, a vector carrying a working version of the GALA gene is injected into the body. In one approach, the vectors are delivered to the cells of the liver, which then secretes the enzyme into the bloodstream for delivery to other organs, including the heart, kidneys, and other affected tissues. Another approach delivers the working gene directly to the heart, kidneys, liver, and other affected organs. A vector, which is derived from a virus, is used to deliver the working gene because viruses are designed to get into cells. But don't worry, all of the viral genes have been removed and the vector is modified to only deliver therapeutic genes. Once delivered, the working gene instructs the cells to make the enzyme allowing lysosomes throughout the body to break down GB3. Gene therapy could also use an ex vivo approach to target Fabry disease. The treatment would remove a person's stem cells from their body and then introduce a vector into the cells carrying copies of the working GLA gene. Stem cells are versatile cells that can develop into different types of cells in the body. And with the right genetic instructions, they can also create therapeutic proteins like alpha-gal-A, after receiving the vectors, the modified cells are returned to the body to produce the vital alpha-galactosidase A enzyme in lysosomes. By allowing lysosomes to do their job, Fabry disease can be slowed and existing symptoms can be limited or stabilized. Researchers continue to work diligently on gene therapies in both preclinical studies on animals and in human clinical trials to determine whether they are safe and effective. For more information and resources about gene therapy for Fabry disease, visit ASGCT.org.